Sometimes RVing sucks. <laughs> that is why we are so glad every once in a year that we can come back to our house. RVing really can suck, but in today's video, we're gonna talk about some ways that maybe can help you get over it. All right, welcome back everybody. It's a Real Talk Tuesday. My name is John. If you're new here, this is No Ordinary Path. And we are a family of five that live in our RV. It's a 44 foot toy hauler. And we've been traveling around the United States while I take travel nursing contracts for the last five years. It's been a great adventure. We are glad you're here today. RVing isn't for everyone. In fact, sometimes there are some seriously heinous parts of doing this type of lifestyle. One of which is actually maintenance and speaking of, RVs actually in the shop right now. We're glad that we have this place, our home in Arizona, that we can stay in during that period of time. I do think it is worth mentioning, we still consider ourselves a full-time family in the RV, even though we do have this place. Keep in mind, we're only gonna be here for like six weeks or so. We're out of it and back in the RV again. All right, so let's get started. Number one, close quarters can mean extra fights, or let's just say extra tension all around. Sometimes it's a benefit because you do have a close-knit family, but sometimes it's not a benefit. Closestness together is uh, means sometimes some tension and fights and just ir general irritability with everybody. We try to combat it a little bit. One of the things that you can do is to try to get out of the RV as much as possible, whether that's like hikes or just being outside of it or as separated as much as you can inside. Sometimes that personal space and that personal time is really important. Number two, no adult privacy. This one is particularly painful for me. <laughs> I won't dive into it too much, but let's just say having teenagers in an RV makes, they're, they're all in the other room right now too. And so all of a sudden it got really quiet. We've been telling them to be quiet this whole time while we're filming. Now it's just dead silence. You guys know what I'm talking about. How do you combat that? Sometimes it's just windy. Three, fewer showers and just general dirtiness. In fact, I like to say that my children are specifically dirt babies. Uh, if given the opportunity, they will always dig in the dirt for their own pleasure. RV can be tough to clean too. You'd think having a smaller space makes it easier. And in some ways it does, but also being outside, especially doing a lot of boondocking like we like to do, means that dirt easily comes inside. And I'm not even going to touch on the pet hair. You can do things like we do when we're boondocking and join like a gym membership so that you can take more frequent showers at a place like that. Number four, planning fatigue. I'll be honest, this one bothers Kristen more than it bothers me because she does most of the planning. This life is amazing. We get to see so many different things in our routes, especially in between contracts. We've hit so many different national parks. It's awesome. We've seen some amazing things. But behind all of that fun stuff comes the where are we going to stay? Where are we going to get fuel? Where are we going to eat? Where do we fill up? Where do we dump our tanks? Where, 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 when, what, where? You can see how it gets somewhat exhausting. One of the things you can do to try to combat this is, you know, spread it around a little bit. It shouldn't only be Kristen's responsibility. When we're driving, I try to plan our routes and stuff like that to take some of that stress off of her. So try to space it out a little. Number five, always having to worry about managing the tanks. Now that's not just the black tanks, it's also the gray tanks, and it's also the fresh tank if you're out boondocking like we like to do a lot frequently. Whether it's, where am I gonna dump this? Do I have a schwagen like we do? You know, where am I gonna get fresh water? Do I even poop in the RV? You know, like there's just different ways that people do things to combat this too. It can be one of the toughest, most difficult things for people to get over about this lifestyle. And yes, boondocking also adds to it certainly. 
Number six, getting mail on the road can be really frustrating. Usually getting packages and stuff like that from Amazon or some other place isn't too difficult. There's ways you can get around that. It's actually the important type mail that you need that are like, you know, tax documents or bank statements or bills or stuff like that. That's where the trouble comes from. Because a lot of places, one of the things you could do is have mail sent to your campsite. Or you could do like what we do sometimes, get a UPS box. Or lately, we've been using a service called Traveling Mail mailbox that works really way. So there are some things you can do to get over it, but none of them are just easy peasy like having a mailbox right outside your front door. Number seven, smells. Um, yeah, this is so many different things because it's not only the tanks like we talked about, it's also the bodies and the dog and sometimes it's not even your RV that you're smelling, it might be your neighbors. Um, and because it's a recreational vehicle, there's a lot of recreational activities that happen out in the campsites. Uh, yeah, so smells are a thing. You can combat them by using products like, you know, the Wallex drop-ins for your tanks or, you know, air fresheners or things like that. Febreze is one of Aaron's favorites, certainly. <laughs> Number eight, costs add up quicker than you think they're going to. A lot of people, including us, thought when we first got into this life that it was just going to be so much savings. We didn't have a mortgage anymore. You know, it's gonna be, I'm gonna save so much money by RVing full time. Yeah, you still can, and there are ways to do it, but you might be surprised once things start adding up, you get a new RV that's bigger, you need a bigger truck for it, bigger truck payment. There's all sorts of camping fees, propane to heat and use the runnings of the stoves and stuff like that. So there are little bits and pieces here that add up very quickly. Number nine, it can be hard to relax and sometimes doesn't feel secure all the time. And what I mean by relax is an RV, is not the most secure structure. You know, whether it's weather, you know, that you're concerned about, and it really does get actually windy sometimes, and the RV moves in the wind storms, or a tornado that you have to run from, like we had to do up in this video. Oh, I'm talking about like theft and stuff like that. Even in an RV park where we had bikes stolen, was in an RV park in Alaska. We got that bike back. Mama Bear got that bike back. Sometimes they don't always feel like the most secure. Another time we got spotlit by a helicopter, all sorts of fun things. So there's some things you can do to make things more secure by making sure that you pack your stuff up, have lock boxes, get a, a tonneau cover for your truck. You know, just have locks on things that are very visible and beefy looking. And of course, whatever other protection that you feel like is necessary for you to feel safe. Number 10, healthcare. And what I mean by that is that while you're on the road and traveling, sometimes it's just an inconvenience to go to the doctor for whatever reasons. Maybe it's an annual routine checkup. You know, maybe it's I'm not feeling all that well, or maybe it's even dental or our vision or something like that. It seems more convenient to just wait and push it off until you get back to your home base or wherever you snowbird or wherever like that. So sometimes you have a tendency to push things that might need to be addressed a little bit earlier off until later because you convince yourself that, eh, I'll get it when I get back to my doctors that know me. One of the things you can do to, you know, help with something like that is maybe establish a type of insurance or healthcare system that has like telehealth so that you are able to use and call in virtual appointments with doctors. So we love our home base and we have found that having it and being able to return to it typically cures most of those issues for us. But what we've found is that having spent some time here, it's not very long before we start getting the itch to get back in the RV and get out there to more of our adventures. In fact, I guarantee you that our youngest and our dog, especially the dog, prefer the RV and cannot wait to return to it faster than anyone else in this family. But the rest of us, we need time to reset. I hope you've enjoyed the list. Now it's kind of fun. It is all true, but it's kind of fun. But please, Take it lightheartedly. Don't let us fool you. RVing is amazing. We would continue to do it despite all those things. And it really is a game changer and has been a blessing in our lives. I mean, those things really do suck, but RVing doesn't. Thanks for watching and we'll see you out there. I've got a rebel soul.